Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk a little bit more about Log4j and how to configure it using properties or XML files. And this video was actually something that I got a question on an earlier video, how to do logging in Log4j using Log4j API, best practices and tips. And uh, the question comes from uh, Vinay Rathod and he says, thanks for the video, Daniel. Can you make a video for doing the same above configuration through prop files or XML files? And of course I can do that. So let's look into this. Let's switch over to the screen here. You see that I have the config class here that I ran earlier and this will just run through and do some logging, 10 logging and wait one second between each log event. And up here we have the configuration in code. We remove all the appenders, we create a pattern, we set up a console configuration appender with a specific pattern on the info level and then add the appender. And that will give us some output. But if we just run this code without any appender, we get this, no appenders could be found in the logger uh, console appender test. Please initialize log4j system pro uh, properly. So we don't have any configuration. And if we look in my source tree here, you see that I have a log4j XML that is put in the root um, folder of this project. And this is a Maven project. So where you should put your logger appender files in a Maven project so it builds correctly and adds those to your application is in the main resources uh, folder here. And you can use this resources folder either in the test folder or the main resource folder depending on it's a, if it's a test case you want to log or if it's a main uh, application you want to log. So let's switch over here to the properties case and I will change this uh, properties file to from the example to specific properties. And here we have the configuration that we need. Uh, we have first the root logger, so everything will go to the root logger. We have that in a debug case. We could have either debug, trace, info, um, warning, error, fatal. And then we have the console appender and the file appender. So that here we can add as many appenders as we like. And then we have the specific appenders configuration down here. We have the log4j, an appender. We have a name of the specific appender. It's a console appender. We assign that console appender to this class here. So we say that this is a console appender. And then we assign the layout to a specific layout clause, which is the pattern layout. So all these clauses you can extend or you can do your own if you like. And then we have the layout conversion pattern. So that's a configuration for this layout. And we set that to the layout that we want. And down here we have the file appender. That's the name. We set that to a rolling file appender. We have a specific pattern for that for a layout and conversion pattern and we set the file for the test properties. If we run this example we will get some output to the screen here. We see that we have the console appender working its case and we also have the file appender that will create a file when we end the application or when the buffer is full. So if we look down here we get a properties logout and we see that we get some information in that file. So I will remove these log files here. And if we go into the properties file again, I have another case as well. If you want to have a specific configuration file for a specific package or a specific class, if you have something that you want to debug even more, you can create a specific appender for that. And down here, I have an appender for the org EA. So we say that we want to create a logger. We want it to be for org EA. That's the package. We could set the class here if we want, if we want to write the full class name. And then we say that we are in the debug mode and we have the file package appender. That's the name I set here. And again, we see that name down here. So here we define the package appender 
and up here we set that to a specific logger on org EA and we also set additivity to false because we don't want this information to be put in the root logger as well. We can do that but we don't want it to, do, uh, to bubble up in this case. If we run this specific example we see no log output in the console because that will not be pushed up to the root logger. It will stay in our specific log logger for this package. And if we look in the package log file, we see that we have information about the run. But if we look in the general file, we have no log output. So we will do this uh, change over here. We will set the properties file to example, and we will pull in the XML, XML file instead. So let's look at the log4j XML. So first up here, we have the log4j configuration and I have set that in a debug mode. So we will get extra information about the initialization of this package. Usually you won't set this to true or you can set it to false. Um, and then we need to say that we have a log4j context up here. So we'll add this uh, specific namespace up here. Then we have an appender. And this is the console appender. We set that to a specific class. Very similar to the properties case. And then I have added a target here. That's available in the properties case as well if you like. And I set that to system out. Then we have the layout with a specific param down here for the conversion pattern. And the file appender, very similar name, and then the file appender here, set that to a specific file and a pattern. And down here we have the root logger, it's just the root element in this case, in this XML file. We set a specific property uh, priority, in this case we do debugging. And then we add some uh, appender references here. We can have as many references as we like in the root logger or any other logger. So this is the console and the file appender. If we run this case now, we will have um, test uh, the XML configuration instead. We see that we get some output here, a lot of it. And um, when it's done, we get zero. And you see here that we have some output on the initialization in the debug mode. And if we look in the test XML log, we see that we have the output here as well. I will remove that and go back to the XML file because we have the other case when we have, want to have a specific logger. So down here, I have a file package appender and it's very similar to the other. I just set another file name here. And then I have this specific logger here. So we say that we have a logger with the name org EA, very similar to the properties case. And then we have the additivity set to false. So everything we can do in this configuration file, we can set that in an element with some attributes. I think this is very readable. And then we set a debug level to debug or the level to debug and then we add an appender reference here file package appender so you see up here we use priority and down here we use level and if we run this specific case now that we have added this you see that we add the appender down here adding appender with the name file, file appender package uh, to category org EA and we don't get any other output because we have uh, additivity false and if we look down here in the normal log file we don't get anything but in the test package XML file the specific log message will be written. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope this answered your question Vinay. If you have any other questions, suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.